Hello everyone. As you can see, this is the two-door sedan we've been working on restoring, and we're getting near the end of the project now, so the next big thing we're going to do is fire up the engine and see what happens. Now this is a rebuilt engine that the owner bought we think about two years ago, and it's never been run. We know nothing about it, we don't know anything about who rebuilt it or what they did to it or what condition it's in. And if it has any problems or needs to be removed for any reason, now's the time to do it rather than later after the car is fully assembled. So we're going to try and fire it up and see what happens. Now because of how long the engine has been sitting, we're going to try and pre-lubricate everything as much as we can. The fuel system is pretty much done. It's got a rebuilt carburetor. Lines are already hooked up. We need to rig up some kind of temporary ignition system for it and finish installing the radiator hoses. And that's about it. Before we try turning the engine, I'm going to preload the oiling system. Now, there's an old-fashioned trick for doing that, and before I talk about that, first I'm going to give a general idea on how the oiling system works on this, in case any of you are not familiar with it. And here's an engine block for a demonstration. Now, the oil pump sits here. It pushes oil up here, through this tube, up to this front chamber, and the front main gets lubricated through this hole in here. Now it has these dams here to keep the oil from just running all the way to the back. Now this one, the oil doesn't quite go over the top of it, it goes around it. As you can see on the side cover, this isn't quite as high as the dam. In fact, this is higher than the opening here. So wall oil is going around here a lot of it is actually going through here to lubricate the timing gear. So it goes around here, fills this up, and this is the hole for the center main. Then it overflows over this, runs all the way here, and there's a whole way in the back there for the rear main. Now the rate at which it runs from the front to the back, that varies depending on engine RPM and what kind of pump is being used, but I've been told it takes about 45 seconds. Then once this gets full, the side cover has an opening, which goes to a steel tube, which runs the oil down to the front of the block and pours into the oil pan. Now the steel tube that goes across here, it also acts as an oil cooler. And just because I can, I decided to put together a demonstration. Now we have a tube going to a vat of dyed water and we're going to let that in here and the water is going to flow pretty much the same as the oil would. Now typically with most modern engines, there's a way of turning the oil pump without turning the engine. That's not the case with this, but an old trick that a lot of people use is they'll just remove the distributor, and that'll leave an open hole all the way down to here. And then you can pour a quart of oil down there, which will fill up the center and the rear section of this. A quart is probably a little too much, but you can't put too much in it. It'll just run out the overflow tube and back in the pan. The only problem with this is it doesn't pre-lube the front main, but that's the first to get oil when the pump starts turning, so we can get away with that. This is also a good thing to do if you're trying to start an engine that hasn't run in several years. Because these passages, once they're full of oil, they'll stay that way for a few months without the engine running, but they will eventually drain down. I learned this trick from a few old timers, and it makes perfect sense. Now, surprisingly, there's a number of other old-timers out there that'll tell you this is some kind of old-fashioned superstitious thing that makes no sense, which pretty much is the reason I rigged up this demonstration. 
It has nothing to do with witchcraft or superstition. It's based entirely on logic. All right, we filled the engine with oil. I put a few drops of oil in each cylinder, and I'm gonna try cranking it over with no compression just to see if the engine will turn. Okay, it spins over pretty easily. So next we'll try and put together the starting circuit. Now the owner wants to set this up for 12 volt negative ground and he already bought a rebuilt starter that's been made for 12 volts. So I'm going to throw in a battery box, borrow a battery out of one of my cars and throw the cables on it and see if we can get all that to work. I don't know what kind of ignition system the owner wants to run on this, but this is an old stock original distributor that was with the car when we got it. And it's in pretty good shape, so for now we're just going to use it as is. Well, this is pretty normal for a new restoration. This thing is supposed to be rebuilt and road tested, ready to go. Looks like it's got a reproduction needle and seat that are holding. I don't know, maybe it was just jammed. The float hasn't sunk, although it's kind of beat up. So I'm just going to assume this got jammed open and put it back together and see what happens. Alright, I think it's fixed now. We should also fill the transmission because when the engine's running, the cluster gear and the input shaft are turning with it. And it looks like I already filled it. Now one thing I want to mention before we start this up is since it's a new rebuild, we're going to run it at a fast idle and that's about it. We're not going to rev it up, at least not at first. And it's surprising how often I've seen people, they buy a new engine or a rebuilt engine and right when it starts up they just rev it up really high or hold it at wide open throttle because they think it's going to wear in faster or just because it's exciting. That is really bad. The bearings and the cylinder walls are generally set up a little bit on the tight side so that by the time they wear in the clearance is just right. 
And this is true whether it has poured Babbitt bearings or insert bearings or whether or not it has oil pressure. If you buy a brand new crate engine today, the same rule applies. And it was probably all assembled with a film of engine oil or assembly lube on everything. It's going to take a while for the oil to fully circulate and warm up to proper operating temperature. After we've been running it for a few minutes, if it doesn't have any problems and everything's working properly, we'll start revving it up a little bit to see how it responds. But even so, we're not going to rev it up to wide open throttle or anything like that. Alright, it's got coolant, it's got fuel, it's got oil. We have the wiring all hooked up, so it's ready to start. Well, I'm pleased to say everything seems to be working. It fired right up. It's pretty quiet. It's not knocking or clanking. I think the exhaust manifold is leaking, but that's not a problem. It has nothing to do with the engine. It's not throwing coolant or oil anywhere. We checked the temperature of the cylinders while it was running, and they were within about 20 degrees of each other, which is just fine. It's firing evenly on all cylinders. And let's check the oil. It's perfectly clean. No water in it. In fact, it's so clean I can't even see it. Yeah, it's there. Well, I sure feel a lot better. Looks like we're not going to remove the engine anytime soon, so we can finish assembling the car. And one thing I didn't mention earlier is we filled the cooling system with tap water. It didn't use actual coolant because if it all ended up going in the oil pan, that would have been a waste of money. Now, this car is still a long way from being drivable, and I didn't want it to set with tap water in it, so I drained it out immediately after we were done. Another big step forward is, for the first time since this car has been here, it moved on its own power. Yeah, it was only about 10 feet, but still, it did it. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm not sure what we're going to tackle next on this car or when, but whatever it is, you'll see it in a future video. So, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.